Hey Guru Nation, how's it going? Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and share. And really, if you don't know what to comment, just put a robot emoji. Put your favorite emoji, one that best represents you emoji. <clears throat> it really helps me out with the algorithm a lot. Yesterday on my live stream, I got asked a question. And it's actually a good one. From a site perspective that has never done oncology, and is venturing into oncology, what are some things to look out for? The main thing to look out for, outside of the long list of con meds, outside of the long medication history, surgical history, different lines of therapy history, outside of the tons of adverse events and serious adverse events, like way more than non-oncology studies. There's a couple of things. Number one, it's going to be, you're gonna to have to pay attention a lot to weight loss and how that affects your dose reductions. So in oncology, way more frequent than any other indication I've ever done, Patients experience weight loss as a nature of the disease, as a nature of the chemotherapy. Most protocols require you to reduce the dose uh, in order to adjust for the weight loss. Another example that you don't really see in other indications is reducing or skipping doses, skipping cycles. In oncology, they're usually cycles. Skipping cycles due to low neutrophil counts or other lab values based on PI's judgment. The good news is any oncologist knows or even oncology nurse knows that this is standard of care. So standard of care applies a lot to oncology research, right? Probably more so than any other indication where standard of care and research are kind of separate in oncology standard of care and research are kind of integrated and there's a number of factors we won't get into but a lot of it's due to the nature of the disease and the obviously the life and death scenarios that can play out so those are the main things i would watch out for um, adjusting dose based on weight and adjusting or skipping dose based on lab values so pay extra attention to this stuff if you are working with a research-only oncologist because they're probably not as familiar with standard of care. They may know it theoretically, but from a practical standpoint. And I've seen a lot of sites make these mistakes because they get into uh, research, but they don't have much experience with oncology treating patients outside of a research setting. So they tend to make a few deviations. Some of these deviations are potentially dangerous to the patient. So those are the things to watch out for. Other than that, I think it's great. One of the downsides for the patient is oncology is one of the only indications where the patient's insurance can actually be billed. So watch out for that too. Why? Again, because the standard of care is kind of integrated with the research in oncology. I know there's been some legislation for covering those costs. Um, I, I don't think that ever actually passed, but somebody let me know in the comments. I'm not super experienced in oncology, but I have done some monitoring. I haven't done any oncology from a site perspective, but I've done it from, from a CRO perspective, both in the investigator initiated trials that I manage for my CRO and for the contract monitoring that I've been doing. So that's the basics in a nutshell of transitioning to oncology studies for a research site. Good luck, Guru Nation. We do need more researchers like you out there who know what they're doing, who can accrue patients, and who understand the fundamentals of research. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.